watching Notes and Nine. Hello, and welcome to Notes and Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 81, X-Pages Upload Files Control Hack. Mobile controls, we have a problem. Okay, before we get into the meat of the show, just a couple updates. Uh, this show ends a string of five that I did uh, that I like to call a Notes and Nine week. I do well, once or twice a year. And it uh, started Monday, now uh, this is the Friday show. And I'm really happy about this week. There's a lot of great content. I got two great new contributors in Paul Calhoun and Dan O'Connor. And they, they really helped me out for this uh, event I'm trying to do called the Drive to 99. And that's where I want to get to 99 shows by December 9th. Get it? All the nines and stuff. Anyway, so uh, I do realize that I push out a lot of shows in a short amount of time. So if you have any any trouble keeping up or so and they've aged out of the blog, um, I do have this site, index.notes9.com, which which is also called xpages.tv for now. And and on there you can get to all the old shows uh, fairly easily, I think, free, either through the all-episode list or the by contributor or so. And you might want to look around there. There's 19-plus hours of X-Pages videos. It's, it's up to date, so I, sometimes I forget to put the latest shows up there but but it's all up to date now and it sh- should hopefully be fairly easy to find older material okay uh moving on uh in today's show um, i have chris tui rejoining us and he's from the website dominoguru.com and he's a IBM champion in every sense of the word. He's a great community member, and I, I credit him for really my, my first real X-Pages learning experience for an article he wrote back in 2008 called Harness the Power of X-Pages in Lotus Domino Designer uh, that I read on the plane on the way down to Lotusphere and started programming X-Pages on the way back from Lotusphere. So that worked out fairly well for me. Um, he's got a great website uh, with a lot of great blog posts, a lot of things that kind of make you think and he also has a bunch of these five dollar apps available um junction light i reviewed on a, a previous um notes of nine for um uh, excel importing and stuff like that makes life a lot easier uh for getting data into it and uh so you might want to just check that stuff out okay so th- this is a different kind of show for me because it's uh, i know as least about this topic as, as probably any show I, I put out probably um, but but here's the deal so iOS 6 came out and I've been waiting for iOS 6 for, for the Apple devices forever because previous to iOS 6 there is no native way to do a file upload to get a picture off the the phone and you needed some kind of hackery with like phone gap or, or something like that to make it work and, and getting a picture off the phone is, is quite honestly the holy grail for me for a bunch of apps that, that I need for the day job and and gosh even my last company uh, could use that so that that's a huge thing um so but now with ios 6 you can do this so just dropping a file upload control on an x page you you go to it from your ipad or your um iphone and then you you hit the upload button or so it's going to give you the option to choose an existing picture or take a new one and then if you save that data source, that picture is saved, and it works great, um, as long as you're not using it in mobile controls. And since it's a mobile device, you would think you would want to use it on mobile controls. But it doesn't work, and that's kind of really disappointing. Uh, this is all on, all on iOS. I don't know anything about Android, so take that for what it's worth. So well, what's going on here? Well, there's a problem. And, and again, I'm not an expert on this. I'm, I'm trying to learn what I can to, to make this work, and, and Chris is helping me with this. And so make sure you, if, if I say anything wrong here, you, you go to the blog and leave a comment and tell me. Um, but, but Chris has this great tutorial on this, what I think is a similar issue. So if we go to his website here, he did this back in, gosh, in 2011, um, where he discovered this problem inside a dialogue box. So I'm not going to read through the whole article, but but I did want to kind of like highlight, highlight you know the gist of this. Is basically what he's saying is is if the file upload control is inside a dialog box, then because HTTP GET does not support multi-part form data content types, which is a little, getting a little over my head or so, is you get the the text fields will save, but the attachment does not come across and save which is exactly what I've been seeing in trying to get this work in mobile controls so that's why I, I kind of think this is a similar issue okay so he had he published this video uh, a while ago and and I, I never reused previously published videos but I am gonna hear so this is really the video from the demo from this show and what he's showing is this 
trick or or hack or whatever you want to call it on how to get around this problem by putting your content inside an iframe and he has this in this working for the dialogue box from this video and and I've been talking to him offline and and we're working on getting mostly he is doing it but getting a demo set up of, of this inside the mobile controls which he has working um, I just haven't seen it yet but but if you put an iframe in there it should work uh, fairly well so again so that this is his article so uh, I do recommend you, you you refer to that let me see if we go back to PowerPoint okay so w what it is is again the, the the attachments do not get passed through in a dialog box or in the mobile controls um, IBM is aware of, of this at least from the mobile controls point of view um, I, I, I sent uh, something to them and, and they're investigating it so hopefully there will be just a native fix and we won't need to do this this iframe business but to talk about this iframe and how this works um, I'm gonna reuse this demo from Chris and and here it is and and it's a I, I watched the whole thing a couple times there's a lot of great information in there especially you know from you know if you're just a client developer and you haven't done a lot with iframes and stuff like that so with that being said let's go to the demo I've always been a fan of showing the application first and then getting into how we got there, sort of reverse engineering the entire process and going over the technique that way. It works for me, hopefully it works for you. I have here a very basic XPages application. I have a button that sits across the top, sort of like an action menu. I can click on that and it opens up the OpenNTF Extension Library's dialog control. Within that dialog control I can see here I have a form. Now typically if you were to submit this it would use the partial refresh uh, type of submission and it would submit the contents of this form via HTTP GET. The GET method is great it allows you to send content really dynamic looking however and that's how most Ajax functions. However, the limitation therein, you cannot have multi-type content. So, I could use a form in a dialog control all day. But as soon as I try to attach uh, a file or include other multi-type content, that'll be stripped out in the resulting notes document when I save this back. We found a workaround. And this is what this application does. Completely seamless to the user. So I'll select a file attachment. Let's grab an image. And I'll click Save and Add More Files. Now, these two buttons, Save and Add More Files and Save and Close, essentially do the same thing. Save and Add More Files allows you to continue saving. You'll see this title actually updates dynamically. I get a new title because it's a brand new form. I didn't have to close the dialog and go back in. The second thing it does in the back end is updates that view panel. So you're constantly seeing the new documents as I upload them. Now save and close actually finally kills the OpenNTF extension library dialog and I'll have my documents here. Now a few other things that really go beyond the scope of this demo but I figured I'd throw in there just for fun uh, is the ability to select and delete documents directly from the view really slick again kicks off that partial uh, refresh of the view panel gives it more of a complete application feel you're more interacting with the application uh, the other part is having a file download control within the view column and those who have been following my tutorials on how to take the view panel take a view column from there and really run with it by not rendering view content within that view column but treating it uh, adding a panel and and creating your own data source that comes into play here so we can see here I'll click on an attachment and actually grabs the attachment and allows me to pull it down it's not a link out there's no repeat control and I can hide this if there's no attachment I can display it's really dynamic and it uses sort of the best of both worlds so let's see how we did it 
I'll pull out the designer client. Now, I typically run a higher resolution, so bear with, I'll be slow going through this. But here's my home.x, uh, my home x page. You can see here I'm just using uh, core, I'm using a custom control, and I'm using the OpenNTF uh, extension library. I have here the extension library dialog called dialog file upload and within here I have my custom control. Now my custom control is very basic. It just says okay it's an iframe and I have three properties the element source, the element ID, and the element class. Once I pass that through it acts as a container. So I'm using an iframe within this dialog and what that does is it allows me to to treat that as a portal. I open up that dialog and I'll go back to the demo so you can see this at play again. I open up this dialog and the contents in here are completely dynamic. This might as well be Google. And to show you really how the, this works out, let me go into the theme and I'll in a sense turn off the CSS. I'll reload. It's functional but it's ugly. And You can see here is a file download control. You can see it all in its raw, rad, for non-CSS styled and themed out format. So I'll click on this. It still services the dialog but you can see there's actually a padding in here and the iframe resides within here. If I inspect this you'll see that the the page itself, and here's the iframe, points to fileupload.xsp. If I were to launch this separately, you'd actually see it's an X page. I could go in here, now it's throwing a JavaScript error, but that's sort of the purpose of this, and I'll get into that in a second. Let me go back in, turn on the theme, or at least bring in the, the CSS again, so I don't have to stare at this ugliness for far too long. So there, we've got this seamless looking part of the dialog. It's really nice and I can even grab an attachment, throw it in. I'll save and close. So let's take a look because our, our home has that dialog. Let's take a look at the actual functional piece because there's, there's two more s specific things that we should point out within the home page you have the view and it's within a div with an ID of notes view. That comes into play because it gives us a container that we can refresh via partial refresh. Now I have a simple script block here and this will generate JavaScript, um, client-side JavaScript uh, using uh, a combination of client JavaScript and SSJS syntax uh, to really give me what I need. And what I need is this, two functions. High dialog uh, underscore file upload and that's a function that initiates an XSP partial refresh get which is essentially, hey go refresh that underlying view panel right here. And when that's done I use digit by ID to get a handle on the dialog file upload and I hide it. Now there's a second function that just refreshes the backend document. Let's see both of those in play within the file upload. Really nothing amazing here. Uh, the first thing I do is with a script block is get a handle on the parent. Now in this context when I open up the dialog control the form which is in that iframe, its parent is home.xsp. And to be able to make a call to, that refreshes the view via partial refresh, so I get that more dynamic feel, I simply just call a function that I've defined, and that's refresh notes view. I call that via parent.refreshnotes view. So every time I open up this file upload, it actually says, oh, go to your parent 
and refresh. And that's why when I opened it up in its own separate page, there was a JavaScript error. There was no parent. It was opened up. It's an orphan, so to speak. So I have text. Uh, it's an H1. That's what you see the uh, file upload here, and that's CSS styled. Uh, you see title, file attachment. Those are all standard right out of the box. If I even toggle over to the design, you, you see it's all very basic. Uh, the function uh, really comes in, and you'll see even this is basic. You have um, your save and close. I'm doing a full submit. It's a submit type button, full update, and my page says go to file upload and make it a new document. The target action is a new document. The save and close, again it's a submit. This opens up the hide dialog. So we can see Again, this script, as I open it up, it refreshes the back end for me via the parent uh, refresh notes view function that's housed within the home.xsp uh, x page. Takes care of it for me. The hide dialog, all this does, and this goes old school web developer hackery. The script block that says parent hide dialog file upload which does something really cool here if we look at the X page. The high dialog file upload says, okay, do your partial refresh get. So refresh the notes view container, thus updating the, the embedded panel here, the, the view panel. Show me my updated document. And on complete of that function, go ahead and hide the dialog. And you'll see here, let me grab a rather large image. I think these are somewhat hefty. So I'll save and close. You'll see it's actually updating here. And as it's processing, you'll see this refresh before it closes the dialog. And there we go. You now have this fully functional dialog-based form that also accepts rich content. And all you have to do is you know, go old school with the development, abandon the get method approach, that, that Ajaxian type of development style, and you get some pretty slick functionality. And that's the demo. Uh, I thank Chris for letting me use this video that he has uh, posted. And uh, here's my contact information, and I thank you for your time.